Why don't we go next to? Oh, I don't know. How about um, how about Ryan from Dallas, Texas? Ryan, welcome to the program. What's on your mind today? Hello, David. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, thank you for taking me. Um, so I was just wondering, like, you know, you have a lot of these extreme ideologies being pushed by the right to stir up the group of people on the left who don't follow the news as much. Um, so they don't know the specific details on certain topics for yeah. instance, like the, um, like the Dylan Mulvaney, uh, saying they were saying that, uh, he came out or she came out, you know, uh, saying that she was a spokesperson for tamp for tampons or something like that. And it was just like, that wasn't even what happened. Apparently she has said that she, kept one on her sometimes or whatever, you know, for a friend or whoever may need it or whatever. And so I just, sometimes it's difficult because I have friends who, you know, are on the left, but they, they, they don't actually follow the news. Like I had a friend who mentioned that, oh, Kamala Harris hasn't been, you know, in the public since she came into office. And so, uh, <laughs> like you know, she hasn't been like, seen in public at all. <laughs> yes. And, um, even though you can follow her on YouTube, uh, weekly. And so yeah. I just, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. It's a pro I have a lot of conversations with people where they, uh, they, they'll say things like, listen, you know, I grew up in a democratic family, but like this woke stuff, it's really got to end. And I'll go, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, what do you mean? And they go, no, it's just, you know, it's crazy what's happening with, with, uh, with Antifa and it's just crazy. It's like, everything's so woke. You can't do anything anymore. I go, Oh, like what, what can't you do? They go, no, it's just, it's like, it's just the, it's the environment. It's the feeling of like, you just can't, everything you say you're going to get in trouble for nobody. Knows. Oh, like, what is it you're trying to say that you think you'll get in trouble for? Well, no, it's not me, but like, you know, and you'll spend 10 minutes like this and it goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. And it's still, I yes. guess, someone who's voting for Biden or whatever, but it is kind of disappointing. Yes. And and I'm actually kind of worried um, because although um, I think that Biden has done, um, I would say, a, a, a decent job um, as president, yeah. I think that um, him being 80 um, and running for president again, I think he's only doing it just so that he can defeat Trump because maybe you know, the, uh, the Democratic Party are afraid of Trump winning. But I don't think that um, Biden running at this age, at his age is actually going to be uh, good for the Democratic Party as far as interest. No, I don't think it's going to it's it's not inspiring. It doesn't generate uh, it doesn't generate interest in the way that uh, you're you're sort of talking about. I, I agree with you completely. And, you know, so there, there are people who write to me and go, David, I don't know that Biden can defeat Trump. If you look at polling, if Biden can't, I don't know that anyone else in particular can either. I mean, Trump has a significant level of support in this country, as shocking as that may be. I don't know who can beat Trump. Yes. And I have one last quick question. Um, I know previously you had mentioned that you weren't a Democrat, but I saw in your video the other day you mentioned you were a progressive social Democrat. So I was just trying to confirm which it, which it was. So social Democrat, the D is lowercase. It's not a party affiliation. So I'm not a capital D Democrat. I'm not a member of the Democratic Party. I don't um, I'm not a, I, I'm an independent voter from a party affiliation standpoint. Progressive social democracy is an ideology, not a party. Mm -hmm. So the D is lowercase. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Good, no, that's, good. That's, I think that is basically the, the clearest explanation. That'll help me for my next conversation with my friend. So thank you. Okay, good. All right, Ryan, thanks for the call. All right, there goes Ryan. Let's go. Um, I mean, against my better judgment, let's go to Donald from Palm Beach, Florida. I'm a little worried about this. Uh, Donald from Palm Beach, Florida, you're on the air. OK, Donald from Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, clearly, it was a joke. They bailed. Very, very funny joke. Let's go next two. Um, actually, let's try once more. Donald from Palm Beach. Did you, are you actually trying to get on? What's going on? You're not getting afraid now. Or whatever joke you were going to do. Yeah, they are. All right. Uh, well, they're gone. How about uh, let's go to Louis from New Brunswick, Louis from New Brunswick. Welcome to the program. Thank you, David. So good to be on your program. Pleasure. 
Uh, I just want to chime in on something that the uh, the last guy was saying, Ryan. Sure. I was I, I noticed as well that people were throwing around the word woke quite a bit uh, at work and just just around, and I, I realized that it, it meant vastly different things to different people. So I started asking people, "Can you just help me understand what that word means?" Right. And and I was being a little facetious, and like I noticed, like the older generation talked about like being hyper. Uh, hypersensitive, take, you know, taking offense. And it was like, you know, pejorative, like, oh, I don't like woke, like it's going woke all over the place. I asked young people, uh, especially people, uh, especially like um, people who might identify as being a minority. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, no, it actually has a lot to do with just understanding the, the historical context of, of, you know, uh, of historical wrongs. And uh, so I think there's a huge problem. I think that the right really weaponize the word. So it's almost a, you know, it's like a bad word in a sense. To I'd be go further. I mean, f so first of all, Louis, I have a YouTube clip called something along the lines of they don't even know what woke means, where I talk about a lot of this stuff in detail. I would go further than to say that they've weaponized the word woke. The right has actually perverted the word woke because really what woke originally yeah. meant when the left used it seriously. Now it's pretty facetiously used. But when the left used the word woke, what was meant was I'm aware of problems in society, some of which are more structural than about the individual. And I would mm. like to find solutions to those problems like that. That's that was really the meaning of woke when it was a sincere term. And it's been weaponized and perverted from the right by the right. I don't really know anyone seriously using it. Like sometimes I'll joke around like friends will say to me, Someone will recommend a TV show, for example, or a movie, and then someone else in the conversation will describe the plot and someone will say sort of tongue in cheek, "Ooh, sounds like it might be a little too woke for me. And it's a joke. You know, everybody, the, right. the term has now become one that I don't know of people on the left actually using in a serious way. Interesting. Yeah, because the right definitely uses it in a serious way. I got another question for you. Um, a couple months ago. You had one of my favorite authors, Jefferson Morley, on the program. Wondering if you're gonna be able to bring him back anytime soon. Well, you know, we don't tend to have authors on more than like once a year, but okay. I'm glad to have him on again in the future for sure. He does a great substack when he talks, you know, primarily about investigating um, the JFK assassination. He's really up to date on on um, on disclosure coming from the uh, the government. Okay, so I got a question today. Uh, NASA actually held a public forum on their investigations of UAP. So like, I guess that's like the modern word for UFOs. Yeah. So here's my question to you. Uh, Jefferson Morley would posit, I think a lot of people agree that there's still a lot of uh, disclosure that hasn't happened in terms of the JFK assassination case. Now there's a lot of stuff going on in the, uh, in, in like mainstream media, uh, like from NASA today about UFO disclosure. So here's my question. Do you feel like this is a, is this like a, uh, an endemic issue in our, in our modern society where there's a lot of information that's being withheld from the public? I don't know that it's a particularly modern issue. There's a long history of the classification of documents. There are entire books written about whether there is overclassification. I did an interview about it. I don't believe it's specific or conspiratorial to UAPs and Kennedy is what I would say. But there are other people who have far more to say about that issue than I do. Sure, sure. So, um, David, during the lockdown period, my wife and I really enjoyed watching your show on YouTube live. It was it was almost therapeutic. So I just want to say thank you. You're doing a great job. Thanks for taking my call. Louis, thank you so much. Very much appreciate that. That will do it for live calls today. We'll do more calls. Don't worry. We'll do it again. We'll take a quick break and be back with much more on the Friday show right after this.